We welcome anyone who is new to our church today. If you wish to kneel during Mass, we do provide kneeling pads. They're kept in the narthex just outside the church, and you're welcome to get one to use. with holy orders. <laughs> there are some folks who uh, maybe they don't understand that? Well, no, they do understand because they're a priest. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. Three degrees no, of holy order. No, particularly when they seem to be
Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Parish. We're so happy that you have joined us today as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Our presider today is Father Diascanis, assisted by Deacon Bob Smith. Please stand. Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We continue our celebration of Easter this eighth day, the second Sunday of Easter, which is referred to as Divine Mercy Sunday. In the Gospel, Jesus tells the apostles, go out and forgive people's sins with my authority. Bring my mercy to the world. So people don't just believe in my mercy, but they actually experience it. We have the image of divine mercy as Jesus appeared to St. Faustina, a Polish nun before World War II. And this is how he appeared with flows of white and red coming from his side, symbolizing blood and water when he was crucified. But he said, but I die to forgive you. Tell the world that I will forgive them if only they confess their sins. So this hopeful note of God's care for us, his mercy, his patience. We also have our Easter candle, which we blessed last week, our new Easter candle. And it has Eucharistic symbols on it. It has a chalice and a host and the silhouette of the 12 apostles. That Jesus rose from the dead and he remains with us in the Holy Eucharist. At every Mass, he comes back as if he's rising from the dead anew. He's coming back to us as bread is changed into his presence. So as part of this Eucharistic revival occurring around the United States, we have our Eucharistic Easter candle. Let's begin our prayer now by acknowledging our sins of the past week. Let us seek God's mercy and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, 
put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. In this Easter season, we want to begin each week's homily with a little reflection on Mass as we grow in our appreciation and understanding of this prayer we call Mass. Just take a little part each week. Today, very basically, we reflect that Mass is a complicated prayer. There's many parts to it. We stand for some parts, we sit for some parts, we kneel for some parts. We just received 25 Catholics into the church at Easter last Holy Saturday night, last week. Um, and they all said they're very careful not to sit in the front pew. Because <laughs> they don't know when to stand or sit or kneel, so they always take their cues from the rest of the congregation. Why do we do this? You know, there's a logic to it when you think about it. We stand when we're praying together. We sit when we're listening, as we're doing right now and we kneel when we worship. We stand six times during the Mass, we sit three times, and we kneel two times. So we stand when we're praying. We, stand, we were just standing as we prayed the Gloria together. We'll stand again when we pray the Creed. We'll stand again when we pray the Our Father, those prayers we all pray together. We sit when we're listening to the readings or when we're listening to the homily. We kneel when we start the Eucharistic prayer. Now, at St. Francis, we don't have kneelers, so it's more difficult to kneel. Some of us kneel, or are able with the kneeling pads, but when we elevate the host and the chalice, we do bow, right? It's an act of worship, because God is here. Bread changes into Jesus. So that's just a good, as we go through Mass today, as we stand or sit or kneel, think about what we're doing in those moments. It kind of helps us enter more deeply into the prayer. We began last weekend a series of reflections. We're going to continue for four weeks titled Victory, You Can Be Redeemed. Victory, Jesus died and came back to life. He won, right? God wins in the end. That's the good news. And Jesus can turn things around. Things that look bad can become good. We call that redemption, turning something around. making a, a good result from a bad situation. We like the stories of upsets, turnarounds, underdogs, part of the attraction of March Madness, right? As it turns out, it's pretty much all number one seeds in the finals. But along the way, there's some upsets. Today, we consider Jesus can redeem our doubts. Sometimes doubts and questions arise in our lives. These two he can redeem. We look at the gospel today, John chapter 20. If you have doubts, this is your Sunday. We welcome all doubters here to St. Francis of Assisi Parish uh, because we remember St. Thomas, the great doubter, right? In the gospel today, he's not there on Easter Sunday. It's almost like Jesus set it up. Jesus appeared when Thomas wouldn't be there because he wanted to teach a lesson. And the apostles later tell Thomas, 10 of the apostles were there. And they say, Thomas, you're not going to believe this, but we saw Jesus. We know he died three days ago, brutally crucified, but he came back to life. We saw him. He talked to us. And Thomas says, nuh-uh. Thomas, we're not making this up. What do you think? It's ridiculous. We all know he just was crucified three days ago. You think we're lying? You think we'd make a, a joke? 
I mean, you, we, we've been living together for three years. We've been walking with Jesus for three years. He did say he would rise again on the third day. We just didn't know what he meant. Thomas said, nope, I don't believe you. Unless I touch him. So seven days later, on the following Sunday, Jesus appeared again, and Thomas was there. And Jesus said, Thomas, touch me. Look, I have a hole in my hand where the nail was. Touch it and believe. Thomas went from doubt, not trusting his friends, the apostles, not trusting the word of Jesus, to then making a great act of faith. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Jesus, you are my Lord and I am your servant. You are my God and I am your creature. No more doubt, Jesus. From now on, the rest of my life is for you. He went from doubt and questions to having a firm faith. And the rest of his life was dedicated to telling the world about Jesus. He went all the way to India, according to tradition, to bring the Catholic faith there to baptize the people in India. And today, Catholics in India still trace their faith back to Thomas. So from doubt and uncertainty, a bit of pessimism, can come deeper faith. We can be stronger on the back end than we were originally. So how does this apply to us? Sometimes we find ourselves in a season of doubt, a time when questions arise. We face difficulties, uncertainties. Things aren't working the way we would expect them to. Prayer doesn't seem to work the way we expect it to. Things happen to rock our world and throw us off from our certainties. There was a documentary on BBC Radio in England recently titled, In Doubt We Trust. Usually it's in God we trust, but maybe in England, in doubt we trust. Because there's this growing skepticism. We can see this kind of vague feeling of disbelief. I'm not sure there's a God. I'm not sure Jesus is real. I'm not sure Jesus formed the Catholic Church. Those are the three basic questions. Is there a God? Is Jesus God? And did he form the Catholic Church? I want to consider two stories of people who move from doubt to conviction, like Thomas. The first is someone who was indifferent who became interested. Her name is Jennifer Fullweiler. Maybe some of you have heard of her. Jennifer Fullweiler. She was an atheist who became a Catholic comedian. Her YouTube videos are out there. You can watch them on the way home. But she grew up in a house where neither parents believed in God or practiced any religion, and so she just grew up in that culture. They were faced on science, stuff you can see. She grew up as a young adult. She was hip. She got young. She was married, she, but not practicing religion until she gave birth to her first child. And it was a difficult delivery and chemical balance was off, and she was experiencing some depression. But she writes, one morning as I looked in at the baby, in the pre-dawn light, filtering through the windows, I felt something new within me. It wasn't despair. It was unfamiliar yet welcome, a feeling. I peeled back the layers to find out that it was doubt, doubt of my purely materialistic worldview, doubt of the truth I had believed since childhood that there is nothing transcendent about human life. I considered in almost every single time and place throughout human history, people have believed in some kind of spiritual realm. Now for the first time, I wondered if maybe I was the one who was missing something. She said she started to doubt her doubt. She never believed in God, but now she started to doubt her atheism. Maybe there is a God. Maybe there is something spiritual. Where did this baby come from? This is a miracle. This is beautiful. From an invisible cell, now there's a baby crawling around. I always thought people were naive all throughout human history and just looking for God as an explanation for what they couldn't understand. Maybe I'm the one who's naive. So it was the birth of a child. There was an event that startled her and helped her to reconsider her beliefs. But then she followed up by reading. She read a book by another famous convert, C.S. Lewis, an English writer. His book is called Mere Christianity. I highly recommend it. 
What does it mean to be Christian? What is the next, what's the logic of the Christian faith? It is incredible to believe in Jesus. So she read that. Then she read the Gospel of Luke. Then she became Catholic. And now she's out on the internet promoting Catholic ideas through comedy. Jennifer Fulweiler. The other, the second example, a modern, recent person, someone who actively opposed the Catholic religion and then ended up promoting it. His name is Joseph Pierce. Grew up in England. Again, in a family that was pretty much, I think they were baptized Anglican, but not practicing, pretty much on the border of being atheistic, but very anti-Catholic. And as a young, as a teenager, he got involved with a bad crowd, and they were kind of promoting racist ideas and white supremacy in England at the time, back in the 1970s, early 80s. And he became just a thug. They would just pick fights. They would go over to Northern Ireland to fight against Catholic, Catholics. He, he was the editor of a racist newspaper at the time. Because he was instigating hate, speech, and violence, he was arrested, imprisoned for six months, but he got even angrier while he was in prison. He just kept doing push-ups and sit-ups, so when he came out, he'd be even stronger to beat more people up. He just filled with hate. But a few years later, he was in prison again for a longer period of time. And as he was sitting in prison, he's like, what am I doing? Where is my life going? And he faced a moment of despair. I'm a mess. I've got no plan. No real future. And in that moment of despair, he was vulnerable. And a chaplain, a Catholic priest who was working at that hospital, started visiting him and talking with him. And he said, you should pray the rosary. He's like, I'm not even sure I believe in God. I don't, definitely not Catholic. Yeah, I know, but what else are you going to do? You're in prison. You've got plenty of time. The rosary is a great way to pass the time. He started praying the rosary. And in that prayer, God's grace broke through. And he began to believe. And he began to read like Jennifer. He read another great Catholic convert, G.K. Chesterton, some of his books. He's an English Catholic writer. And when he came out of prison, he was baptized and he became Catholic. And now he writes, but he doesn't write hate speech. He writes biographies of Catholic saints, trying to promote the Catholic view, the Catholic vision of life, faith in Jesus. Joseph Pierce, he moved to the United States. I think he lives in North Carolina. His autobiography is called Race with the Devil. It's very powerful. Joseph Pierce, Race with the Devil. So people who don't believe, who come to belief, people who resist belief, and oppose it and mock it and then promote it. They move from doubt to even stronger faith, to zeal. They're stronger on the back end than on the front end. God doesn't expect us to have all the answers, but he does expect us to search for the answers. He gave us a brain. He said, keep asking questions, keep reading, keep discussing. What is the meaning of life? What is the meaning of God? If you're a seeker, keep seeking. Three things we can do to help us grow in faith. First is ask for faith. Faith is a gift. It's mysterious why some have it and some don't. In the second reading today, St. John says, those who believe in Jesus Christ have been begotten by God. God has given you that faith. He helps you to believe. You say, Lord, if you exist, help me believe in you. Jesus, if you're God, help me to know you. That's how it starts. Make that prayer, asking for faith. Secondly, set up some daily prayer time, time to sit with God a few minutes a day. It takes time to let God into our head. It kind of happens slowly and gradually. All of a sudden you believe. All of a sudden you believe firmly. All of a sudden you want to pray. All of a sudden you're interested in reading. All of a sudden you want to be involved. You can't even sometimes track exactly when it began. In the bulletin today, we print again our plan for daily prayer. We encourage our Christians to pray three times a day. Start the day in the morning with a short prayer, end the day at night with a little examination, and somewhere in the middle, pause for 10 minutes. So Easter season is a good time to try to establish that habit. So ask for the gift of faith, a few minutes of daily prayer. And third, finally, explore the evidence. Learn. Read. Watch videos. I just heard a sad statistic. It said last year, 12% of Americans read a book. 
we're not reading, but we are listening. We're reading websites and there's so much information on the internet. We're promoting a video series, it's called The Search. There's information in the bulletin this week and take one home. It's excellent, it was made a few years ago. It's a Catholic video series, seven videos, but search, it's just, let's try to meet people where they are. They're searching, they're seeking answers. What is the meaning of my life? What's the meaning of life in general? Is there a God? How can I know? Is Jesus God? Where does the Catholic Church come from? Just kind of walking through these basic questions. It can, it, it's a good series for anyone, for ourselves, but also those who aren't here, those who don't have faith. Just watch, just watch the first video. And if you like it, maybe you'll watch some more. So take that, that video series and push it out to your friends, your family members. Keep looking. And then... Also, but some of us went through the Catechism of the Year podcast last year, especially part one of the Catechism, the Creed, one God, three persons, the Holy Catholic Church, just kind of answers the questions of our faith in God and Jesus in the church. And you might go back to that Catechism of the Year podcast and just listen to the first few episodes. Or again, send that out to others. So just some things we can do to build up our faith to Seek answers to the questions. Brothers and sisters, nothing is irredeemable. God can turn it around. He enjoys turning it around. Like he did on that Easter Sunday. And he can redeem our doubts. He can strengthen our faith. Like he did for Jennifer Fulwiler and Joseph Pierce. Next week we'll continue this reflection on... Jesus can redeem our hurts, things that have happened to us or things that have been done to us that we struggle with, that hold us down. Even those things, Jesus can turn around. We're here this morning, let's ask him to begin it, to redeem us, our lives, our doubts, our hurts. Amen. pause a moment, we seek a thought or insight from God to bring with us into this week. To stand together and profess our faith in the God who redeems us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now confident in God's care for us, we voice our prayers to him. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that on this Divine Mercy Sunday, 
she will rededicate herself to living and proclaiming the gospel in truth and in mercy. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our friends at St. John the Evangelist School in Genev, Haiti, may the Lord protect them during current periods of political unrest and the ongoing humanitarian crisis. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. To the leaders of government, that they will work to ensure that all people can live in peace with the freedom to worship God and pursue holiness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by sin, that the grace of the resurrection would move them to receive God's mercy in the sacrament of confession, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by abuse in all its forms, that they may find the courage and strength to continue to grow and trust in the love of our Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For a personal intention you bring to this Mass that we will consider now in silence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear the prayers we offer this morning. Answer them in accordance with your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will pass our collection baskets. Our second collection this weekend is for major building repairs and reserves. You may also use Venmo to make your donation. The Venmo information is on the screens and posted in the narthex. As always, you may also contribute to the baskets in the narthex when leaving mass today. Thank you for your continued support and generosity. So 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of his name. For our God and for all of the church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. kneel or stand. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Let us bow. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us bow. The mystery of faith. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Thank you, Father. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that, that you should, should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the word and my soul shall be healed. healed. Wring your hand and feel the place of the nails. And do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. For the sacrament of Holy Communion today in this Easter season, we have the opportunity to receive both forms, the body and the blood, just to highlight the solemnity and beauty of this time of year. There will be a ciborium and a chalice at each of the aisles today. Body of Christ. Amen. Blood of Christ.
Everybody, rest.
Lord Jesus, we have received you within us. You live in our bodies. You live in our souls. Redeem us, Lord. Turn us around. Redeem our lives. Redeem our doubts, our questions, our pessimism. Give us faith. Give us clarity. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for just a moment, our parish updates. Uh, first, I want to introduce our new seminarian, Seminarian Eric. He is from St. Lawrence Parish in Jessup, but he's been assigned to serve here at St. Francis and St. Louis for the next four months before he begins his seminary training in the fall. Eric just finished four years serving in the United States Army and now is just beginning his seminary formation this week. So we thank him for his service and we welcome him. Thank you, Eric. Eric has never served in Mass before, so Matthew is giving him some pointers. <clears throat> also, I want to inch, uh, invite up one of our parishioners, Anna, Anna Bevan, who is here, to talk about one of our outreach efforts. Each month, we've been highlighting a different outreach effort in the parish, ways we're trying to serve those in need during the corporate works of mercy. So if Anna can come forward. And her husband, James. morning. Uh, yeah, I'm James, and this is Anna Bevan. Uh, we're the founders of Linda Ben Foundation, which was founded four years ago. We've been parishioners here at St. Francis for about 10 years now. Uh, the mission of our foundation is mostly serving Howard and PG County, um, mostly through food rescue, uh, Blessed in the Backpack program, and here at St. Francis we have a community garden back there. Uh, there's two gardens that are fenced in, so what we're here today is looking for anyone who wants to volunteer to help uh, with planting in the garden or weeding, uh, picking the vegetables and fruits as they become ripe, distributing that kind of stuff. Uh, we also have opportunities for uh, volunteer with both food rescue, working at our pantry, food distribution, a few things like that. Um, so it's a good way to get involved, um, you know, work whatever hours you're available. You can always get in touch with Anna. She's always available. Um, so if you have any questions, we have a table set up outside of here today. And I'll let Anna talk more. Thanks, James. Hi, everyone. Um, speaking of the gardening opportunity, uh, we will kick off the uh, both healing and hope garden this potentially the, the tentative date is may 25 it, it's in the morning saturday i'm looking at father discans because he hadn't known it yet so <laughs> that's why it's tentative between 9 to 12 noon um and we are also 501c3 so if you know anyone who needed some service hours we could definitely support that as well um 
so it is really a good way for you guys have to be a stewards of um in taking care of god's creation um study shows that 90 percent of the earth's top soil is at risk uh, um is at risk by 2050. our beloved pope francis shares similar passion around leaders to take actions around climate change as of god's way of warning us of our ways as his co-creators our very own saint francis during his time clearly included other of God's creation outside human beings as part of his evangelization. So it's really, really a good way. And the reason why I'm saying all this is why we're passionate in cultivating our soil is because um, last year we have more um, volunteers from non parishioners like we got like 30 to 40 volunteers and we have like probably eight volunteers from our parishioners. So I really want us, I want to see a flip of that rate to have more like maybe 30 or 20 volunteers from our parishioners rather than having to rely on other non parishioners. Um, right now, um, like for instance, the Harvard Studies of Adult Development which is the world longest studies, um, about 80 years, prove that embracing community help us live longer and be happy, which means having a meaningful relationship with your loved ones and others can influence your health. So not only you're gonna help um, us with our mission to provide fresh, vegetables and fruits to our communities in need you will also allow yourself to be happy and healthy by allowing us to be engaged to engage with one another um so aside from our program on um community garden uh, we do have the veggie van and um resources that we give for our Howard County residents, especially with our schools. So we have workshops and we have the veggie van going through different um, hotspots in Howard County. And the reason why that's important is because in our, in, in our county alone, 20% of our residents here is suffering from food insecurity. So even though our county is thriving, we do have hidden poverty in our area. And we see it because we are in the school helping them. We have blessings in the backpack, which started with 24 students and now growing to 350 students at the moment. Um, so the food insecurity is high, and I really encourage you to to help us support our mission uh, with, in partnership with St. Francis of Assisi Church. Um, so St. Francis is our family's home base. This is where I recharge spiritually. And also this is where I look for um, assurance that we're on the right track. So I really, really hope I could see more backing from our own parishioners in advancing food security um, initiatives in, in, in Howard County. Thanks for listening. And if you are um, interested, me, James, my husband, and my son, James, will be in the table to ask any questions or to see if you are willing to, do, to, to sign up for our volunteer opportunities. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Anna and James. <clears throat> So Anna has left her full-time work to do full-time outreach, bringing food to people in Howard County. And James working with her, their foundation is called the Linda Ben Foundation. They have a food truck, as she mentioned, which drives around bringing fresh vegetables and fruits to people in Howard County. And we're excited that we're now developing our own garden right here on our property. The parish council said, how do we use our resources? We have a lot of fields, we have a big parking lot, we have a lot of classrooms. How can we use all these resources? So this is one way. We want to expand and develop the garden, grow the food, and bring it to the people. 
and Anna and James got a truck. So we have our own system. It's their own private foundation, but they're parishioners. So we're very proud of the work they're doing, and we want to get involved. You know, get your hands dirty, go out and grow food. There's something very satisfying about that. We'll expand the garden. We'll double it. We'll triple it. We've got a lot of property. And then some of us will go out with the truck and see the people we're feeding or go to the public schools and bring food for the children who often don't have enough, don't have three meals a day. So it's exciting. We're kind of linking up with them. And there's so many possibilities just depending upon how many of us get involved. So talk to them afterwards. See what part you can play. Um, this is Divine Mercy Sunday at 3 o'clock today, which is considered the hour of Divine Mercy. It's the hour Jesus died on the cross. 3 o'clock today at St. Louis, we're going to chant the Divine Mercy Chaplet in a very beautiful form, have a short little reflection, and then some food. So if you can come today, uh, 3 o'clock, Adoration and Divine Mercy Confession starting at 2. And finally, this is the first Sunday of the month, so please join us for some coffee, refreshment, juice, some Easter treats immediately after Mass. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.